don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Fight forever and ever and ever and ever. Is we, we had one of these in the back, and it's been a while. We have a signed NXT belt. This will be the first auction item of the night. I'll probably talk to Miro as soon as he gets out here about his time and developmental and NXT. Also, his time in Bulgaria. I'm sure that's going to be a conversation we have. But we actually have this signed NXT belt. We've auctioned this off a time or two before. It is signed, JSA certified. It is signed by Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole, Tommaso Ciampa, Drew Galloway. This will be the signed auction item for the evening right here will be what we're auctioning up right now as he comes on onto the set right now we got Miro yeah come on Miro Rusev whatever we call right no, here but no no it's not whatever it's Miro Rusev it's, me, me, Miro. it's not whatever you can't whatever me I'm your guest I'm sorry I'm what sorry whatever I, I apologize. I, I apologize. So so we'll stick with Miro for the time being. Yeah. yeah obviously, that's, that's a But real... what's up, y'all? I'm back. He's back. My arm got bigger, clearly, <laughs> because I signed about 10,000 of these guys. <laughs> well, and the forearm probably got really huge, too. Like, you know, I got a good arm pump. It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. It's a, they <laughs> treating you okay back there? Yeah, they brought me kombucha. Only like 12 grams of sugar, but it was all natural. No, none of that added stuff. So we're good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of kombucha as well. Are you? Yeah. Well, we got the mustache for kombucha. He's really like yeah, the yeah, mustache yeah. is a kombucha it's thing. It's gotta be like a hipster stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, see that's how it is. I, I like it explains why I date so many hipster women is because I have like. And I you're buy, also you're a handsome man. I, you got just, well shiny head. I buy kombucha by the case. I have a mustache. I have a bald head. You can hit him up on Tinder. Uh, exactly. Well, not so much anymore, but, but no, <laughs> no not. Are you married? I uh, no one not married. So I, you can hit him up on plenty of fish <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or farmers meat. Farmers meat, hinge, whatever the weird ones are, you know the obscure. Bumble is new. Bumble, Bumble's very new. There's a lot of action happening over there. Far more action than what you think. <laughs> Maybe there's too much action going Maybe on. Maybe there's too much action <laughs> going on right now. There's a lot of action going on on a video screen right now. Uh, but right now, I'm going through the auction items right now. I've got some items that are a bit more related to you and your career. This is a, like a, almost a Miro adjacent. I have the signed NXT belt that I've been bidding, that people are taking the bids on right now. It's I was in NXT once. I know, that's why I... I was there in the beginning. There was not even exactly. NXT, it was FCW. Yeah. And it was a small arena with nothing going on. And then the news started to spread around about this huge NXT turn and Orlando. We were there setting up the ring, we were setting up the building. So we were there in the beginning. It was a pretty cool transition. Yeah, and you, it, it's like you worked a lot of like guys that are now you know big, big deal. And of yeah. course, obviously, you made, uh, yeah. got to be a big deal as well. I got a really big... lucky break in NXT. It was all thanks to thanks to Dol uh, Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, he gave me my big break, and it was very lucky because I was doing great. And then Triple H came one time, and Dolph was supposed to work, and he had no opponent. And I was doing good in the live events, and they're like, "Oh, let's put Rusev <laughs> uh, with Dolph," and, but then. He was supposed to just like squash me real quick, but then Dolph said, no, we're gonna have a good match. And the next thing you know, I was on the road soon after. Yeah, I was gonna say, they called you right up to the Royal Rumble, probably too long after that. Yeah, yeah. I, remember, I remember that could have happened, and you, you were making some waves. Like, I remember when you made that debut with the Royal Rumble, yeah. and they'd be like, oh, wow, they, they, they called him up so soon. Yeah. Like, and people like, yeah, he definitely is He's making a lot of waves. Like, Somebody he, had to beat Cena. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and that's, what, that's, that's what I think is amazing, is, is like, I keep thinking about, like, you know, when you think about wrestling and, and the things that you say, like, oh, I may have been in Madison Square Garden. I think for this generation, it's like, I wrestled John Cena on a WrestleMania. That's yeah. something you can say. What does it feel like to be able to say that? Um, I mean, it's, it's a great accomplishment, clearly, because he is one of the all-time greatest. Uh, but just to be able to learn from him, you know, just to be able, first working, of course, it's fantastic in front of millions of thousands of people in stadiums, but just being able to listen and learn uh, about the business and everything else is going on. This is where my career, I think, blossomed the most is the knowledge. It's not so much as, you know, in front of the people, but just the knowledge is what I really, uh, really, like, got it from him. Mm -hmm. The psychology, the control, and everything else is just, he's the best. 
What if I say Big Match John? Did you see Big Match John? Like, what did Big Match John teach you that day? Big Match at WrestleMania? Yeah, WrestleMania, yeah. So a lot of people don't know that, but Brody kind of uh, came in. Uh, John pulled Brody and told him to come and kind of watch the match. Mm -hmm. And I thought there was a great respect from John to pay to Brody at that time and how much he valued his opinion. Mm -hmm. And um, But I remember that that was amazing, man. It was just great, just... He told me, you know, the same stuff, just relax and have fun. And, mm -hmm. But then I have to go in a secret entrance and climb up this big tank with bare feet, try not to burn myself. <laughs> and then they're moving all these people from over there because the tank is too hot. They have to move them somewhere else. So these people who paid $20 a ticket got these $2,000 worth of seats because of my tank. So you're welcome. <laughs> We got the army and 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 CJ. It, it was it was great, man. It was great. But what we have for AEW, it's way bigger than that. Oh, absolutely for sure. But let's see what the bids are doing right now on this signed NXT belt right now. What are we bidding on? What are we bidding on? We're bidding on this this signed. Give me this thing. Yeah, yeah. We, no, yeah. I don't want it. Right yeah, we'll get there. Well, we're we're <laughs> performing three fifty. Three fifties right now. And as a reminder, this is signed, signed by uh, Adam Cole, Johnny Gargano, Finn Balor, and of course uh, Drew Galloway. And then, of course, Tommaso Ciampa right there. Um, this is one of the belts that we've had for, sitting in the back right now. I'm mostly doing this because I don't want us to mess up this belt anymore uh, at all. But it is in prime condition, thankfully. And it's been sitting in the high spots warehouse for a while. And I brought it up because I wanted you to talk about NXT. Because you were in that early stages of NXT. Yeah. Uh, and you probably, especially F FCW, like which I think they did a, a documentary piece not too long ago mm -hmm. about FCW and the importance of that yeah. in the development of the developmental system. Yeah. Be. And back then it was developmental system. Now I don't think there is one. I think NXT is kind of like you know one of the bigger shows for them. Mm -hmm. It's clearly not as good as ours. No, it's clearly not. I mean, I mean, did you see the ratings? They th th I mean, we, the ratings just came out. So hey, no one's thing debuted it. Yeah. You know how he had a huge number, mm -hmm. but there was one guy just a few months before that he debuted it. But he's like he got a, almost a million, maybe over a million. Who is that guy? I'm, I'm curious. But hold on, wait a minute. Who was that was guy? He, was, was he Big he? Show? No, he's no, not. No, was that Big Show? That was, not that big show. was, that was Paul White. Yeah, yeah, it's Paul White. It's there was not. Was, so we said it's not Sting. No, it's not the new guy that's coming in. No. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it was this guy. Oh gosh! Oh, oh god! Oh, I'm usually We're... much better at these segues and oh. these hints. I just oh, they make, make make far more sense. <laughs> Of course, of course, of course it was you. It but was... yeah, NXT, sorry, I got taken away by the numbers once again because we beat them all the time. Exactly. Um, so what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about that early developmental system early, when you are learning yes. to wrestle so, and the wrestlers that you interacted with. So I was with. really green going there. I, I trained with Rikishi for about a couple of years. I had a tryout and uh, they signed me, right? So I had these, it took me about a year until I got to FCW, but... I felt very by myself because most of the people there, there, they were already kind of in the indie circuit. So, you know, it was Seth and they, and they Roman and all these other guys and, and uh, Dean, and they kind of knew each other. Mm -hmm. And there was a whole bunch of people. And there I am. I didn't know anybody. I've never been in the indie circuit. So it was kind of a, you know, I had to kind of figure out the situation, what's happening. And everything was going great. But then, you know, the knee surgery, then the neck surgery, that kind of slowed me down. Mm -hmm. Then they said they're going to fire me. Uh, they gave me three months after I broke my neck, and then I went home, and I how said... How did they break a neck like that? That's why I'm, I'm curious. How I don't know, even, I don't know. How is that even possible? I like... don't know, I don't know. That's, <laughs> ask whoever broke it. I have no idea how that happened. Uh, but yeah, soon after, I came back, uh, came with new attitude, and they loved me, and within the next year, I made it on the main roster. Mm. Well, when you say you, you trained with uh, Rikishi, wasn't like also Gangrel involved? Oh it? yeah, Gangrel. Oh, man. talk about him! I, I love, love Gangrel. I love Gangrel. Yeah, so I was with Rikishi, Black Pearl, and Gangrel, and Orlando Jordan at the time, who later on moved on. But Gangrel, man, he's such an amazing trainer because he's clearly very intense. But he means it for a reason. He, everything he says, he comes from the heart. It's mm -hmm. not. He's not gonna. He's not gonna give you the the pretty picture. He's not gonna like sugarcoat it. None of that. You're gonna get yelled, and you're gonna get most likely cursed at in a good way. But if you get offended and you sh and you kind of shell in, then you can't be in the wrestling business because you have to perform in front of a hundred thousand people, and you have to be able to hold on to your coach yelling at you mm -hmm. because he just means the good for you. You know, he's just trying to help you. And a lot of people couldn't handle that. But for me, I don't care. Like I grew up in Bulgaria. I, Every sport that I played, I got yelled at by my trainers and hit and beat and whatever not. So it didn't bother me at all. And I just kept going twice a day or however practices they have. 
and I showed that I wanted more than everybody else. Yeah, and see the Gangrel, like every time I talk to him, especially when it comes to wrestling or how he how he goes about it, he's very passionate. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 yeah. That, 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 you know, you talk about the yelling, it comes from a place of, of passion. Yeah, everything. And, and passion. wanting and wanting the best for, for yeah. his students and for them to do better. Yeah, and if you see any Dave, Dave still does shows everywhere. Mm -hmm. Gangrel, sorry. And when he goes, and you every time you see him land on the floor, he's not... He's not like, oh, brother, like, don't touch me, or no. He's going to give everything for the people, man. If people go outside and they hit him with a chair and he falls down, then so be it. Gangrel is going to just get his fangs back in and, and move on, man. He doesn't care. He's a true pro. He's a true leader at the same time, and I really love his, that man because he's just an awesome human being. Yeah, anybody that's ever come in contact with him, they have nothing but good things Absolutely. to say Yeah, for sure. But uh, let's see if we got any good things to say about who's winning the bids right now on this belt over here, Michael. D. Wayne Cavett, 460. 460. Do we need to shake anybody off? Anybody? Shake it off. <laughs> you want to put this on a 60 second clock? And and people 60 second clock, as I said, sign an NXT belt uh, signed by uh, Drew Galloway. Galloway, Drew McIntyre, Tommaso Ciampa, Finn Balor, uh, Adam Cole, and Johnny Gargano right here. I just like I said, uh, Big E was probably my favorite NXT champ. Yeah, he, he was a great champ, and and, and it's, he's finally getting his, his just due like now. Like I think people are starting to see him. Like he, everybody loved him in New Day, but as a singles wrestler now, I think people are starting to really get on board yeah. with. Well, he's always been great. He's, he's always, always great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's just he has the opportunity now to showcase whatever he has. Mm -hmm. Not like he's been hiding it. No, it's your gosh. <laughs> like he's no. been shaking them exactly. hips for, yeah, yeah. for years. We, now. we see with those hips too. Like yeah, we get man. it. But he's he's just an amazing human being, and mm -hmm. for him to hold that title because he had a. He was not that popular in, in, in FCW, you know, he was a tag team champ, he was new, so he was floating. Mm -hmm. But then everybody saw what he was capable of and they, they gave him the, the, the title and he earned it and he proved it with a five count, it was so great, and everything else that he was doing, so I think you should get his signature there. Oh, that's fine. We're going to do that. But right now we're auctioning it off for the person right here. Yeah, we're Vince McCormick's at four seventy five. Someone sent a reminder. The last time we put this on auction, it sold for seven fifty. So seven fifty. So four seventy five is a steal. Four seventy five is a steal right now. Vince McCormick at four seventy five, right now. Is what we're right do this right now. We're figuring it out right now. I said, see the signatures right here. The belt's in really good condition. It's also JSA certified. Just brought this out right here because, like I said, I want to talk about some of those those people that you were in NXT with very early. Brought mm -hmm. up Biggie. And who are some other other people that uh, you were with very early on that oh, you saw man. the potential? Because you saw you ran through, you saw a lot of people that are now mm -hmm. in, in, with you in AEW yeah. right now, yeah. main yeah. eventers right now. Who are some other people yeah. that stand out in your mind of those early days of NXT? Oh, boy, so I remember. Well, Roman clearly was there. Mm -hmm. uh, Richie Steamboat was there at the time. He didn't. Uh, make it to the main thing. Kobe was, uh, Seth Rollins was there. Eventually, um, John Good, what's his name? He has so many names. Dean Ambrose and yeah. Moxley. He came in later on. Brody came in later on. Bray was there already. Bo Dallas was there already. Boy, uh, Beer, uh, Viking was there already. There's so many people. There's so many people that later on uh, came on TV. Mm -hmm. Big E, as we said, who else? From the women, uh, AJ was there, uh, Aksana was there, uh, Tamina just left. There was quite a few people, man. It was so many, but, and once again, it was nothing flashy. It was not like it was, you know, like those big PCs now. And yeah, yeah. Else. It was just like three rings. And you just go ahead and, and work hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. And obviously, like it was a little bit different because, like, I think you guys probably had to set up and tear down the rings. You had ring. Oh crews. wow, we did and, we did street uh, street teams. So yeah, we okay. we we'll train Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, we did the promo class, with Thursday show, Friday. Uh, you know, some Palatka show or something like that. And then, like, I think on every Sunday or Saturday. We had to get like a few like cars or two cars that'll get like a thousand posters. Okay. And you gotta drive three, four, five hundred miles to a town All right. and illegally put those posters. Oh, illegally? Post. You, you didn't you didn't go in and ask permission? No, 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 okay, no okay. permits, no nothing. Okay, yeah, you yeah. just go and staple those. If you get caught, you have to pay your own ticket, so you gotta be very careful. Oh, really? okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because like, so, I've, I've, I've lived that life as well. Yeah. Stay, stick them on drink machines. That's a good, uh, get, the, get the scotch tape. Like, I still have rolls of scotch tape in my pickup truck of from the time that I would do. Yeah. You know, One time somebody stuff. get caught. They're trying to be smart. It's a yeah. great story. Don't okay. tell anybody. Okay. They will send like with a thousand posters. Okay. And they went to the town. They felt lazy. They dumped them in the, post, in the dumpster. 
they drove back. But so this is when you gotta lie, you gotta be at least smart. You don't wanna show up four hours too early because clearly you were supposed to be gone all day. Yeah. So show up four hours early and you're asked why you back so early. Well we did it so fast. Well, the guy, the crazy enough guy who was in charge of this, drove to the town and checked the dumpster and saw they were dumped there. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. It, they dumped the posters in front of the building when they were getting the posters out, in front of the guy's office. Yeah. And they dumped them right there, so he checked. He was like, what? And they got really busted for that. It yeah, was yeah. a really bad situation. <laughs> yeah, you got to be smarter. When you're trying to cheat, lie, hide, you got to be smarter than that. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, those drink machines, they're always solid. You can put them right there on the side. You get them in a nice food line. So mm. people are going to see them. Mm. But the thing is, too, you can get on all sides of them. So that's that's like a, a drink machine is like three posters in mm. one. So you're still putting them up, but you put them on all sides, and yeah. you're still hitting the traffic on the way. And you have side. to get, yeah, you have to get the intersections because it's key, and you got to yeah. put it here, here, mm -hmm. here. And one drives, it's a stop, and every guy kind of like spreads like ants. Mm -hmm. Back in the car and you drive off. Yeah, and not a lot of gas stations have the cork board in the back by the bathrooms where you can just put one up real fast. Oh, man. Uh, but Look the abandoned buildings are the best because you could knock off like eight of them right in a row. And then it's like very typical like street hip hop but street But no, they told you you can't. You can't do that. No, no, no. Okay, they, you, right. can't, you can't put eight in a row. You got to be just like one or two. There was rules. You okay, there's rules? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there very... any other rules to that? So huh? did, Was there any other rules other than you can't put eight in a row? Was there any other rules? I know it's been a while. Did you guys also get, you also get like little flyers and put them on the windshield of the cars? No, 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 no. We're not that. that. You know, this, I, I had to do that like very early on. For, but like, that's how my training started. Yeah, yeah. So when I came to America, quick off story, but we have time. You've yeah, got, got a bit. We got a bit. We got a bit. We're right now at 475. Yeah. We still got to get to the $700 mark right yeah, now. So I'm going to be telling stories until you get to 800 because I'm not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was going to say a story about. What was it going the to little flyers about? in the cars. Um. Oh, yeah. So uh, from Bulgaria, I wanted Bulgaria. to be always a professional wrestler as a kid, yeah. right? So eventually coming to America, I couldn't find a school. I could barely make, you know, food to eat. And one day, I, it was a Sunday. I was living in L.A. and I opened the WWE thing. It says they had a pay-per-view in San Diego. I'm like, oh, great. I'm going to go watch it. it. It's happening right now. So I'm driving, going, and I watched Great American Bash or something, 2008, something like that, when Randy broke his collarbone thing. Uh, and on the way out, uh, I go to the car and I see a flyer on uh, on the windshield thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw it, it was for New Wave Pro Wrestling in San Diego. I'm like, I don't care, I live in LA, but I'll make the drive. But then I went into the website, they may had uh, they had that link to this other school, which was Rick Drazen in California, and that's how I started training. Mm -hmm. So those things work. If you're in the promotion, you want to promote yourself, use those. Yeah, those little cards. Flyer after shows, and yeah. people come out. And, I, sure, I, and, and also, the other thing is illegal, so that's how you keep to somewhat of a law. Listen, wrestlers are all gypsy vampire pirates at the end of the day anyways. But speaking of, of things that are illegal, or is it? Are we giving this away? Is somebody stealing this belt right now, Michael? Joseph Taylor has a five hundred dollar bid. A new name to me, so I'll, hopefully he has a uh, high spots okay. auction account. I have to have a high spots auctions account for this particular you NXT. You can't just throw naked money. You got to be no, covered. No, it's got to be real money. Not just play money here right now. But we're at five hundred dollars right now. Make sure that has, has an account before we clear that up. Any other people that need to be in and out? For Ricky Rana, if he's in or out. Okay. Yeah, Vince McCormick has let us know he's out, so we're just waiting on Ricky and then confirming that Joseph Taylor has an account. Okay, Ricky Rana, uh, let us know if you're in or out, the way that you do that, guys, on all these bids. we got two more auction items that we're going to get to a little bit later on that are, are definitely more Miro-centric right now. But uh, the way that you let you know that you're in is go higher than the top bid. The way that you let you know that you're out is just let us know that you're out. Just type that in and we're done. Then we can put it on a 6 second clock, then a 30 second clock, then the 10 second basketball count, and then move right on. But right now we're sitting at $500 trying to confirm that we have an accurate High Spots Auctions account. Rick, And we're also waiting for Ricky Ron to let us know that he's in or he is out before we move it's on. It's very simple. It's very simple. You're in or you're out. We've been doing this for almost a year now. You'd think Come that on, people would have hey, caught hey, up with hey, this. Hey, so. listen to me. You're in or you're out. Just type it so I, we can move on. So we can move on. The faster we do this. so You either spend $600 or you don't spend $600. Exactly. This went for seven hundred dollars. You in or you out? You in or you out? Simple as that. So, so the problem we have is Joseph Taylor does not have an account. Joseph Taylor does not have an account. So, so uh, Ricky Rana. We cannot honor his bid. So right okay. now, Ricky, let's see, Vince McCormick, four eighty-five. 
485, Vince McCormick, 485, waiting for Ricky Rana. Well, that's where we sit. 485, Vince McCormick is where we sit right now. Can we go ahead and put it on a 30 second clock, or do you want to put it on a different clock? Why doesn't it have an account? Hey, make an account. Highspotsauctions.com. It's as simple as that. Hopefully, yeah. you would have got it from all the wonderful, fantastic guys. A lot of people got a lot of personalizations. Because how are you going to bid for my stuff when you don't have an account? Exactly. Yeah, if you don't have an account. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Come on. What's the matter with you? Uh, Vince McCormick, 45, 10 seconds. 10 seconds, Vince McCormick. Oh, uh, hold on. Joseph says he's got one now. Okay. He better. He better. Just got, just got to confirm. Got to confirm. Confirm it in three, two. <laughs> We're not that fast yet. We're working our way there. We've only been doing this for a year, right, Miro? We're working our way there. Our, our tech is, is, is as good as it's going to get. It's created. It's so created. $500, 10 seconds. $500, 10 seconds. Joseph Taylor. Joseph, Joseph Taylor. Taylor, 10 second basketball count in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, count. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It's right. a fast count. It's a very fast count. That's why I think I, you can challenge that. that that's that's if why. If you wanted to give 600 and you didn't have the opportunity, you can challenge that and they'll honor your bet. Listen, this, this is why I'm not a referee, all right? I, I, I fa fast count everybody. I am, Clearly. I am the Earl Hetmer of counting people oh, out. Oh, man. Uh, the Montreal screw job right here. Right here. But uh, we, got, we, got an, uh, we got an auction item right here. We're, like I said, it's, it's not a big title belt, but it is. Uh, this is a, a Rusev action figure. Right wait, here. what? Wait, what, what, why would you go to downplay me like that? Oh, that, wait, the, the, what the, are you talking but about? A, but I was waiting to build it back up. This is there's a one of right here, Rusa figure. It's an elite figure. Um, what, whoever gets it will have it have it signed however you want. We, we were some of these elite figures go for a ridiculous amount of money, and this was this well, pretty they should. Look at this. Yeah, exactly. Look at they got my wide open mouth, and they have my title. Yeah, exactly. And my Bulgarian eunuch, which means like a, a young hero in Bulgaria. You have my my medal that they stole from me once from a live event, and the guy posted it on Instagram. Because how can you steal? So this is this. Okay. So a guy comes to a live event. Okay. And so after, you know, Lana used to take my thing and she leaves it down by the ring yeah. announcer. So this guy somehow sneaks in and steals my medal. First of all, great security job by us. But it's okay. So the guy that steals the medal goes home and posts it on Instagram. Look what I got today. How dumb can one be? And at the same time, they found his ID at the same time and our security. And a few weeks after, knocked on his door, asked for the medal back, which we got. Yeah, so yeah. if you steal something, don't post it. Exactly. Don't do that. You could have had a medal. You could, now you don't. Yeah. The people have been scratching their heads to this day. But right now, hopefully you're not scratching your head on this elite figure right now. It was a one of yeah. elite, elite figure Big here tag team with Shiki Baby, by the way. <laughs> Shiki Baby, Bam Bam. I talked to Taz yesterday about Bam Bam. They said he said he used to stiff each other very bad. Uh, so there's a story about Bam Bam. The Rock, I worked with The Rock too. No big deal. And Tyler Breeze, I used to beat him up all the time. There you go. Right here there. we go. We're all connected. All connected. <laughs> right there. This fi action figure right here. We're going to take bids on this. As I said, we'll have it signed however you want it signed. But this is Elite figure. And it's a fantastic figure. Great looking figure. Uh, one of the best. You signed a couple figures today, but I think this is one of the better ones uh, that we brought in front of you. Um, but think about like think about it like a young boy who grew up in, in Bulgaria. Yeah. What it's like to be in action figure. Form. Oh, man. You can't. You, you can't. Because I was always. You were always a kid. You play with toys and not just wrestling but soldiers and like cowboys and all that kind of stuff well, what, were the, what were the action figures that you played with growing? oh cowboys for sure like native americans uh some soldiers like green soldiers the My, little the little plastic ones yeah, they got the, the, yeah, 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 yeah yeah these the, the, guys the, the, the and then they had the big Black Mountain Castle Rock thing. We didn't have that. Didn't have we that. had a lot of uh, trains because uh, my parents used to go to Russia for some stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they would come back and bring us Russian toys, like these heavy trains. Okay. Like, none of these plastic, like metal. Everything's from yeah, metal, yeah, like yeah. the real I stuff. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. With, like, real electricity, 220 volts for kids. It's fantastic. They, they had the little, like, rolling thing in the inside. There's, yeah, like, a little yeah, engine. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember it, that. It was great, my, my dad, My dad did some stuff, too. He didn't go to Russia to get those. It's but okay. He, we it, had the real stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was great. I loved. We all loved. And then we moved on to video games, and you know, being in a video game and just seeing yourself in those uh, just bigger than life things is just unbelievable. Because once again, I was a kid, 
and I always wanted to do it, but just to realize it and to actually live it, it's unbelievable, man. But that's what I'm saying. Everybody can do that. Everybody can follow their dreams. As long as you have a goal and you have a you have a goal and a vision and you're willing to work hard and you take no for an answer, everybody can make up their dreams. If I can from a country so far, then everybody can. Well, let's talk about like like, like Bulgaria. I know I know I know very little about the country, and I'm sure a lot of people who grew up here know very little about mm -hmm. it. Describe what what it was like in Bulgaria. Uh, well, growing up, it was still a communist uh, regime, right? So 1991, when uh, communists went away, it was just, it was just bad. We had electricity was like two hours on, two hours off. There was no food. There was like it was very limited. It was very bad years for for everybody, just the transitional period between the communism and then the, so the Democrats and everything like that, it was bad. Um, but you know, when you're a kid, you kind of don't pay attention to this, it is what it is kind of thing. You just love going outside and, and playing. And you know, I got into sports uh, early, wrestling. I told my mom I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to be a professional wrestler. So she took me to wrestling. Mm -hmm. And I go in and I see an amateur wrestling, there's this and I'm like, what is this? Where's the ropes? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they beat me up pretty bad for a few weeks. And I was like, ah, I had enough of that. And then I did some judo and different sports. So all my childhood, I've been, I've been just doing sports and video games and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really fortunate because also my parents had a, like a video shop. Uh, that they would rent out like a blockbuster here. So okay. I grew up watching movies things all the time. And that's how I got into English. And I started learning English more and more. Because I had the vision, man. I knew that one day I was going to go to America, and I, I, and I was just going to make it there. Because mm -hmm. America is it's the dream land. It's the land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if you people you think that's not true, you're lying to yourself. Well, let's talk about, like, who was the wrestler that, that like, like, how did you get come exposed to, to pro wrestling? Uh, because Hulk Hogan. For, Hulk Hogan was Oh, yeah. Guy, right? Six years old, so Hulk Hogan saw a Hulkamania tape. Remember those Hulkamania tapes they used yeah, to have? Yeah, the Coliseum Home videos. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I watched that and I was like, whoa. I was just mesmerized by his charisma, by his message. Say, uh, you know, eat your vitamins, say your prayers, work hard. You don't see people in Bulgaria say that. It's, it's, it's very like the mentality, it's more negative. Mm -hmm. While the American mentality was always positive, and that's why I was always drawn to it. And uh, when I saw him, then I started watching his movies. He was just so charismatic with everything he did. And I just had no other option. And Arnold, another guy who, you know, the way that he portrayed that you can go there and make it in the big country, you know, in, the, in America. Uh, it's just everything played a role. Like all the movies that I watched and then seeing Hogan. And I love the whole, the combined thing with theatrics and America. Everything was about America. As long as it's America, I was good with it. Yeah. Like you give me America and I'm, I'm for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but wrestling, and that's how I got into just watching wrestling. But then it was so difficult because we had no cable TV. Okay. Um, we had just VHS tapes. It was very, very limited VHS tapes. So because I had to, it was your parents' video store, whatever would come. Yeah, but they don't that. have. So they, we don't have like wrestling in the. Video, but I have to go and ask like older guys, like, hey man, like I'm I'm ten or eight, and I gotta go ask for twenty year old. Hey man, can you let me borrow that tape? Yeah. Get out of here, kid. Yeah. I'm not gonna trust you with my tape. <laughs> Who's gonna give me that tape? You know, it's, it was very difficult. But I found a couple of guys eventually let me watch some Bret Hart stuff and like more like cool things. Eventually, 96 came around, Attitude Era started watching, cable TV came in. So now we had a little bit of WCW, a little bit of WWF, the Attitude Era. And we watched more and more, me and my brother. And you just got to love it, man. Yeah, and that's it's so weird. Like, like kids today don't realize how spoiled they are with streaming so oh, available. Yeah. Like, like like our generation like we're only like yeah, two years apart yeah. and I remember a friend of mine what we would do is we would rent like Coliseum home video like he would rent one and I would rent one and, mm. we, and it, what we would do is I would watch one and then get on the phone and describe to him each one of the matches and then he would do the same yeah. and then I finally got cable mm. so then what I would do is I would record Monday Night Raw and then give it to him the next day on Tuesday. Wow. He would watch it, return yeah. the tape by Thursday, so that way I could record yeah. the next Monday, record it. We just kept bicycling back and forth. That's the good hustle, man. And the kids nowadays, they don't know that. Yeah. There's no hustle with the kids nowadays because everything is there. Like when we were kids, you were saying you had to hustle for your videotapes or you're trading like different things. It's all about going somewhere, trading, trying to hustle your friends. Not in a bad way, hustle, but just, hey, give me this, I'll give you that. Now they don't have that anymore because everything is so, as you're saying, computers, YouTube, everything is there for you. And it's, it's something that maybe lacks a little bit of that, 
aggression towards to getting something that you can achieve. Because mm -hmm. when everything comes easy to you, then you have nothing to fight for. Mm -hmm. And just you'd see something like like a wrestling magazine on the store, and you'd stop dead in your tracks. Like anything wrestling. Oh you yeah, stop anything everything. Wrestling. You're kidding me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let's see if the bids have have stopped or they started. Where are we out of the bids right now, guys? One fifty to Brian Firth in Canada. Brian Firth in oh, Canada. Canada. One fifty. Uh, anybody that we need to be shaken off, or are we kind of settled on one fifty right now, Tom? I like Thomas? Canada. Looks like we're kind of settled right now. We're kind of settled. I'm going to go ahead and put it on thirty second clock right now as a reminder brian uh once we get to that point that i give you the 10 second basketball count and then you are clear you're going to be invoiced for this immediately. And it's a fast count be ready it is a very fast count it's and, and, the and then and then we're going to invoice you uh very quickly after it's a that nanosecond it's nanosecond you're gonna blink you're gonna miss that miss it but you're gonna get that invoice don't miss that because then once you pay that invoice you can tell us how you want it inscribed right here in, on the front this wonderful action figure right here in the front and that's how that's how we'll do it but are we ready for the 10 second basketball count right now for brian firth why is it all called basketball Kent. count i do it a basketball count but why is it called basketball count because in basketball you give the 10 second like basketball because they, they do like this oh. in basketball so this is like an official second because by the time your arm goes down that's one second two second three but, second but, but four second doing this? five six seven eight nine ten brian firth uh, you're picking this up. You will be invoiced for this action figure. Go ahead and pay that as quick as possible so we can get him to sign out. Congrats, Congrats to all the winners. All the winners. We got one more auction item, then we'll get you out of out of here as quickly as possible if you got everything signed. We'll By the way, it. that's a steal for 150. I would have bought that for 150. Yeah, 150. I gave all mine away. My wife is so mad at me. She's like, you're giving all the toys. I'm, what am I supposed to do with them? <sighs> you gotta hang on to those. You gotta get. You gotta keep them like Matt Hardy. Keep them all on a shelf. He keeps them. Oh, he's got a whole. Uh, well, I'll show you some pictures later on. He's okay. got a whole, he's, been, he's almost got a whole whole room by now, as many action figures oh, with him there are. Sorry, I give them all away. But, uh, but, I'm, but I'm pretty sure uh, Matt well, doesn't. That, I'm sorry, that's a good thing. That's I'm a good giving th stuff away. You're giving stuff away. Matt, bad on you. Go give some stuff away. You have plenty. You have plenty. But Matt, I guarantee you don't have an AEW ring signed by AEW talent. I have Santana Ortiz, Marco Studd, uh, all of Jurassic Studd. Express. Michael uh, Stud. Starred. Stud. Starred. Uh, stud. Uh, Anna J. Tay. Uh, uh, Adam Page. Uh, Brian Cage. You even got Matt Cardona, Smart Mark, Ricky Starks, and Dr. Britt Baker on here. And we even have Miro sign it for you right now. Brand for this new. brand new right here. Signature right on here. AEW ring. You know, is the big pay per view coming up this weekend. Big. It's the biggest. Where's it's my big signature? Well, we'll, my signature well, we'll, we'll, we'll have you sign it. Let I don't really want to sign it. You're yeah. going to sign it. Oh. You're going to sign it. That's why you're not. Yeah, that's why. Oh, okay. Yeah, they may want Miro. I'm just trying know, to make sure man. that everything is authenticated. What is the word? Authenticated. Authenticated. I'm trying to make sure you guys are getting a good deal here. That's why I'm here supervising everything. Not only None of those virtual, I'm going to be in Nashville or LA. I'm here in sure. person. In person. This is a real little thing. It's going to be authenticated. Flight. Yes. That's how legit this is. And the lady in the front seat was freaking out because she was afraid of flying. So the whole time, ah! Well, it's flying. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. She's in the front seat. How long? How long? <laughs> like, lady. She was scaring me, man. Like, it's a nice flight. It's not even like a bumpy. It's just like flying. It's cruising. And this, she was just freaking out the entire time. Flying in a pandemic. Way to have your first flight. That's yeah, I know. Like, it, it, and it's from Jacksonville to here. You could have drove it four hours if that's the big deal. Yeah, I would have driven you as long as you don't yell. Yeah, exactly. I, well, yeah, she, here's the thing. Here's a funny story about me. One of the first plane rides I ever went to went on when I was a kid. I don't know why I did this. Uh, but I was a young kid, and I, I was fine with flying. I had done it before a couple of times. But for whatever reason, I wanted to just mess with everybody on the plane. Oh, boy. So I... There was a point in time where we we're about ready to land, and all of a sudden, I just go, "The plane's gonna go. The plane's gonna go down. The plane's gonna go down. The plane's gonna like a little child who, with full red hair, looks like Demon Seed himself, is screaming, Ooh. "The plane is going down!" <laughs> Freaked everybody out on the plane. <laughs> was that before 9/11? Oh, this is way before. This was oh. when I was like six or eight. That's that was your saving grace. It's a saving grace. It's a saving grace. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I would, I would have been locked You'd have been up, taken down, taken down. <laughs> by an air marshal immediately but big pay-per-view aw this weekend yes revolution man this is my first pay-per-view too yeah uh it's a big one it's 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 i'm really pumped for this because once again 
these two guys are not where they're supposed to be. They're supposed to go and mess with some other people because I'm clearly not the right person because they act like a children. You've seen that. Mm -hmm. They send me whole, whole notes with a Y and an N that I'm supposed to like underline. Like, come on, man. Like, is this serious? I'm here. I'm here to become world champion. You're going to play with freaking notes. Like, get out of here, bro. Go find... Go fight Marco Stunt or the dinosaur pretending guy. Like, do something else. Let me be. Let me become my destiny. Let me follow my path and become champion. Don't hold me down. That's all I'm asking for. Move on, Chuck. Move on, Orange. Clearly, I'm trying to warn you, Chuck. I'm trying to take you along with me for the ride so you can experience how to be a man. You don't want that. You want to go and play with the, with the Orange Pope, with the Xanax walking George Michael wannabe guy. Go ahead. You see what happens Sunday. George Michael, that's what you see out of Orange Cassidy. Well, look at him. He's got the, the, the white shirt, the, the glasses, the jean jacket, the Canadian suit, the whole deal. He's like, he's, he wants to be like George Michael. Okay. I, 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 was, I was thinking more like Paul Rudd in One Crazy Summer, but okay. No, I, okay. no. Okay, like, I thought that was more the vibe, but. No, and, I, he's, and he's like. Like, wake the freak up, bro. Like, what kind of attitude is that? You're paid, I'm hoping you get paid because I'm paying really handsomely. Just wake up and show some emotions. Some, some, show some fire. Like, don't just drag along like, like it's the worst day of your life every single day. Well, maybe that's a theory that we need to think about of the ethos of Orange Cassidy. You'd be like, why Why is he so lackadaisical? Why? Maybe. Because he's a walking Xanax. I just said that. That's or what he maybe, does every morning. No, maybe, maybe, maybe. Like, he didn't get the big deal that you got. You obviously... Of they, course he didn't. He lives in a one-bedroom apartment with his friends. Maybe that's the thing. He Maybe he's so depressed. He's like, oh, everybody signed big contracts. And well, then go home. Oh. Don't wait. But that's what I'm saying. Don't waste my time. <laughs> I mean, You're maybe. wasting my freaking time. I mean, I'm just saying. Maybe he's a disgruntled employee. And well, that's why he's like, Don't just somebody else. I have bigger goals. I I'm, I already sang and danced. Look into me. I already sang and danced. Now it's time to slay the lion. Now it's time to slay the, the bear. Now it's time to slay the giant to become a champion. And you are on my way, and I hate that. I hate when people are slowing me down, man, because this is my destiny. And damn, I'll be damned if I let you slow me down. Oh, I appreciate it. That was, very, that was better than the promo you cut on AEW this past Wednesday. That was, that was what that promo? Was, you got a nice little 30 second promo that you did on AEW. Oh. That, aired. that was good. That was well, good. that's Charles. Once again, man, it's Charles. I keep telling him, bro, you come in, you come back because you have a freaking ability. I was almost cursed. Hey, you have don't. a freaking, I'm not. Well, you have a freaking you. ability. To become your full potential. You could have just followed. You could have all you had to do is just get on this backpack, on the big back. Look at this back. Huge back. All you had to do is get on there and come along for the ride. I could have teach you how to be a man because you have an ability, man, that not many people do. You have the soft hands to clean my shoes, to fold my clothes, to do my laundry, to fold all, to do everything in the house. And not everybody can do that. And while you're doing that, maybe you could have picked up some good habits for your own. But instead of that, what do you do? You didn't come to me and talk to me like a man because I gave you a week. I told you, come and talk to me before that. Instead, before you even go home, you go to the office and there's a graphic with the big match on Sunday. Well, I didn't even sign your stupid letter. Let's talk about that for a second. What makes you think I want to go in a match with you? That's why you never trust a man with soft hands. So let's see if we can trust a man who's on top of the bench. But now right I have no other option, Charles, because I told you. You, have, you leave me no other option because the people want to see that. The people want to see me destroying somebody so bad. And I told you, please, let's not be you. Come with me. I don't want to be, I don't want to cave your head in because you have a potential. But you chose the Pope Orange Cassidy before me. And now you're going to pay for it because I have no other option. I'm trying to protect you. You're making me hurt you. And that's just going to happen this Sunday. Very, very riled up, Miro. Very riled up. Well, you started talking about that. Well, you started you talking, and there was a break in there, but you're like, I am not done with my anger. We felt that. It resonated. Which revolution? It's the first pay per view, and first I really. I didn't want to do that, man. I really didn't. Yeah. But now I have no other option. No other option. But let's see if, if, if the bidders have any options right now, or Take we have the any. Top two bidders right now. We had Lucas Patterson at 250. Okay, look at Chris Capri Glioni at 255. Oh, close. Oh, close, back and forth. So, I, right. I'm almost at the point, Jake, I, I almost want to be nice and give it to both. You want to give it to both? How can you do that? Split you want to just yeah, do we 250? Both, we could do two. If they both want it at 250, I'll give it both of them at 250. Okay, oh. so we'll do it. We'll both, if they both I want it for 250. 
we we, we we just so happen to have another one. Uh, so we will do two fifty. You know why we have another one? Because we have this on to sign it. Exactly. Wait, let me get the light. Let me get the light. Here, here. Right okay, that. I don't want right. to. Right. I don't want to cheat myself. Uh, of course, and the uh, lighting's not as good as it should be. I mean, in person, it looks incredible. Uh, <laughs> all natural too. All natural. Uh, but right now, let's let you know. Uh, that all together, you say that they're in. They'll take it for the two fifty. And once they both say it, we can move on. We'll just settle it up that way, and then we'll close this program out. Yep. They're both gonna take it. So. Um, High noon Mexican standoff, I call it. Yeah. We'll do that. Two fi- two fifty each of them. Right. Just say you'll take it for two fifty. Luke, Lucas is good. Of course, he's saving five dollars. We're just okay. On, uh, oh. Chris is in. All right. Chris is in. We're, we're good. good. We're gonna do them. We're gonna do them both. Good for Two fifty. You both get the AW ring for two fifty. Mira will sign it however you want, but you're gonna get invoice for it right now, fellas. So go ahead, pay that invoice immediately. Congratulations. And, hope, and hopefully we got this one settled up and Brian Firth as well. And of course the NXT belt as well. But before we get out of here, we come to the end of the program. Um, is there anything you would like to say to your fans? Any, any more, you know, things you gotta get off your chest about Chuck and Orange Cassidy just here very soon before the pay-per-view happens this weekend. I already said what I said. You man. said what you said. I just, I'm above you guys. You just got to realize that. You don't st- you don't match my size, my strength, or my credibility in the ring. So step aside and go fight somebody else. That's all. And, but unfortunately, we're way past that. I gave you options, and Sunday, there will be no more options. Sunday is going to be time to crack some heads. The good old Bulgarian style. None of that dance and sing guy. We're just going to be good old Bulgarian ass whipping. Right. And I said ass. That's right. <laughs> if you're gonna curse. You might as well do it in the last thirty seconds of the stream. Uh, but but don't I, forget if you if you don't watch FCF. So I want to talk about FCF. You know I'm yeah. a part uh, owner of a football team it's for fan control football. It's a really good concept. Yeah, I saw a little clip of it online. Did you see yeah, it? it's a little it's clip good, of man. it. If you're it's a cool. fan of football, you can come and join the Beast, which is my team. Me, Marshawn Lynch, and Renee Montgomery, all of us champions. Uh, we're on a team called The Beast, and you as a fan can choose the offense, the defense, and we can we have weekly drafts as well. It's a really good concept, man. Mm-hmm. I encourage everybody to watch it. This Saturday is our fourth game, and The Beast, we're in a row because we're 3-0. Here we Yeah. Oh. So uh, thank you so much for, for stopping by, Miro, today. Um, and it's signing everything in front of this beautiful turnbuckle pads thank and you. figures and everything else. I can't thank you enough. And I can't thank all of you, the people that tune in every Thursday at High Spots Virtual Gimmick Table. Make sure you pay attention to Sunday noon drop for this upcoming Tuesday. Sign a live with Terry Reynolds. And next Thursday, Callahan Death Machine, Jessica Havoc, and Sam Callahan will be in the house. So thank you again for tuning in to another edition of the High Spots Virtual Gimmick Table. Don't give up. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Fight forever. And ever. And ever. And ever.